good. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Planning and Zoning Commission of the Local Pla Planning Agency of Akoi, Florida. It's for the June 8, 2021 meeting. Uh, we're going to do the invocation of the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, I'll do the, uh, the invocation and then uh, uh, Mr. Mellon will ask you to do the Pledge of Allegiance for us. Please stand. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord God. Thank you for all that you do for us. Please help us tonight uh, make good decisions in our city. Please help all our first responders. Please help everybody that is out there working for us, Lord. In, uh, in your name we pray, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. <clears throat> Roll call. Vice Chair Lownick? Here. Member Mellon? Here. Member Forges? Here. Member Williams is absent excused. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. I'm going to make an announcement quick. City Hall is open to the public. However, attendance in the Okoy Commission chambers may be limited to accommodate social distancing. Any uh, interested party may be heard during the public hearings tonight. Please call 407. 554-7118 or email citizens at ocoe.org with any comments and or questions. Comments and questions received via email will be filed with the clerk's office and become record. All right, we have the consent agenda. First is going to be the minutes of the May 11th uh, meeting. Do you, uh, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Thank you. Second? I'll second that. Let's vote. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Good to go. No old business. We're going to go to new business. We're going to start out with uh, 613 Lyman Street, the Hossein variance, which is VR 2102. Mr. Hines. Okay, so the first item we have tonight is 613 Lyman Street, the variance. Um, the applicant is asking for three variances. One is to reduce the minimum lot width. One is the minimal lot size reduction. And then the third is a uh, reduction in one of the front setbacks. This here is just a location map showing you where the property is located. As you can see here, this is just Ruiz, East Silver Star, and Lyman, and then the property sits right here. So the area where um, 613 Lyman is located at is primarily low residential, and the area around that is R1. The lot currently, as it stands, is um, comprised of six 25-foot lots, so it's an older plot of community. And the advocate is proposing to split the lot into three separate lots um, with 50-foot width. And the, mean of further, the justification for the variance is so he could put three homes on there. This here is just the variance requested. So right here is just our, um, the chart here just shows you normally the minimal requirements for R1 zoning, which is a lot size of 7,000 square feet. And the lot width is 70 feet. And the minimal um, front and side setbacks are there. So the advocate in his three variants, he's asking for a reduction <coughs> from the minimal 70 foot um, width to 50 feet for all three lots. And then he's also asking for us to allow a lot reduction from the minimal 7,000 to 5,000 square feet. And the last variance would be on the corner lot, which I can show you right here. Um, here, this is Lee Street. It's a paper road, so it's an unapproved right of way. And the applicant asked on this, where this right away is here, um, on the paper road, if we could reduce that standard setback of 25 feet to the 9.3 feet. This here just shows you the area view of um, how it looks. So you see all this area over here is near our downtown area, but it's primarily low um, <coughs> residential. And then this here is just showing you more of that um, So the surrounding zoning is here, which is primary R1. 
the next um, page is just the current condition of the lot. So this is the survey just showing you the current condition of the lots. And then this survey here is just showing you how that those proposed lots would look like if we approve the variance to allow those three lots to exist. It just shows you that this would be the first lot, the second lot, and then the third lot. This here is just another um, survey showing the existing condition of it. And this is also just basically how the lot would look. So this is a, the variance request where he's asking for the 5,000 square foot instead of the 7,000. The 50 foot wide and then the 9.3 setback here along the main street. So it's not an official survey, but basically it just gives you an idea of how that will look like. These are just the current condition of um, Lyman. This is if you're coming out directly on Lyman. <coughs> this here is on the side of Lyman. And right here, you can kind of see, well, right here, that, that's the unapproved right away. Like, it's cut off a little bit, but it's right there. And this here is just a rendering of what he's proposing. So he's basically is saying that from looking like this, he want to propose something like this, three three homes, the same architect, um, similar to this. What are those, about 30 feet wide? Um, I believe they are, no, here it's 50 feet. Because he did something similar, I know he would tell her, in Orlando, and those was on 50 foot lot. And this is, this here is kind of showing you how that would fit. It shows you where the home goes, over there on Lyman, we have water that runs over there, but um, it would be on 70 feet. This is just more of the elevation of the home, how it would look in the side and in the rear. And then this is just more detail of the home on the inside. So normally on variance, we do have four criteria that you have to meet. Those criteria is that it has to be a special condition or circumstance it also has to be um, that they can't meet that regulation literally. Also, you can't confer any special conditions. And then the last one is that the variance, if we grant it, would not get any special um, privilege if we allow that. So as staff, we, we can't recommend approval of the three variants as they are, but we could see ourselves supporting this variance if the applicant does agree to certain condition. One of those conditions would be that since primarily Lee Street is a paper road, so if we could get conditioned with the city commission to agree where we can make that into a linear park, so more, more so just like a park where you could just walk through. Because if you look at the road back here, In the future, I know they're going to realign um, um, North Lakewood. They're going to realign that. So the paper road is right here. And we don't see that being feasible to make that road fully go through because that would be <coughs> a traffic problem. So we're proposing to keep the right of way still, but to make it more to like a linear park. And with those conditions, we're saying that also, since he has that fundage, if we're going to allow that 9.3 foot setback, we also want them to have the, the side of the home with a porch and the side of the home facing that proposed linear park. It would be um, just like the front of the house, really nice and detailed. And um, the fence, if we would to put a fence, since we kind of want more so being close to the downtown and being aware of that, eyes on the street, but going to put condition where we don't want the fence to be completely solid. So it would have to be a four foot, 50% um, see through, like a picket fence or a chain fence where you can see through. So more so eyes on that area because it's going to be an unapproved park. Okay. So with that, we are saying that if those conditions are met, we could, we could grant, see pr approving this variance, but if not, then we wouldn't approve it. Great, thank staff. you. Any questions for uh, Mr. Gates? If they just split, 
that lot in half, it would meet all the city conditions, correct? Yes, correct. It would be all, because our minimal lot size is 70 feet width. So if he was to split that being 150 feet, it would have to be 75 and 75. And yeah, he'll be able to meet the minimal requirement for lot width and um, lot size. And then also that corner lot would be able to meet that because whenever you have a corner lot, you always have to give an extra 10% because of the corner, the extra setback, because you, you have two front setbacks. Also, you said these are receptic. I mean, is there enough room even um, to put a drain field in? Um, I know that area, it is part of the Recaiver um, area, Recaiver study area. So with that, if he did apply, it would it be due us, but he would have to go through the Orange County Department of Health to ask for that permit, and it's up to them to grant that or not. I know right now, I don't believe we have any plans to pursue it there, but we do have water there. But they, yeah, they will have to be on septic. Thank so, you. those. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Those, um, those three lots to the east of, of the proposed um, project, how, how big are those lots? These lots here? No, no, um, on the east side of the, of the proposed project. They're on Lake Wood. On the east side? Correct, of the project. Right here? Um, you know, go, go ahead and put, put the, um, the topo map on instead. There you go, those there three lots on the east, yeah, how big are those lots? These lots here are all 50 foot lots. Okay. Because those are, because um, if you see here, these are older lots, so they were part of, um, really most of these lots, they were um, annexed in when they were part of Orange County. So if he did get that, it would be in line with this area that those okay. are 50 foot lots. What so, about, so what would we be doing? I'm sorry. No, please. I, so I with, with the exception of we do need him to redesign the corner of Lee Street and Lyman, we would not be doing any special favors if we, if, if we're looking at these existing 50 foot lots that are already there. Yes, if you look at that existing area, you, it would be in line with yeah, with everybody in this vicinity, correct? And are there are there a number of seventy five foot seventy foot lots that are in the area by majority? Mm, not directly in this area, no. Most the most of those are fifty feet right. lots. There's that there's that newer two story that it's not new anymore, but across from security it's Yes okay. super slim, right? On Yeah, it's really, really slim. Isn't that a fifty 50 foot lot? Yes. Did it Was that in the city when it was built? Um, uh, you may not know, but. I may not know. You're just saying, um, was that I a could, variant of I property? could look into that. Maybe Mike might know. Mike, that, that two story that's across the street from security, the, the newish one, the that's one. a 50 foot lot, right? Was that Anderson? I mean, it looks. The, the one on the east side of North Lakewood, right up there, I, I, I don't recall. Is that, I, I wonder if that we didn't was. didn't do a variance for it, so. Okay. So, so the ones he, on the east side would be considered legally non-conforming. The homes are old, yeah. for zoning, and so. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see. Do we have the applicant here? Yes, the applicant is here. You want to come on up? I think we have some questions. Go right on up there. Chairman, I'm going to try to get rid of that bar for the people sitting straight ahead. For some reason, the projector went up. Too high. I can't do it. It's gonna just say. Uh, better. I'll just wait for him. Oh, we're gonna try to do it. No, I'm sorry. I'm gonna try to move it, but I don't think uh, I can. I think it's either up or down. It's, there's not a. <laughs> While you're doing that, I've seen some of those linear pass-through parks, like Winter Park has them, and I think it's a, it's a, it's a. Good idea, I mean, but just state your name for the record, if you would. Hello, everyone. My name is Mohammed Hassan, and I'm the owner of 613 Lyman Street. Thanks for having me today. Great. What do you have to add for us, sir? Um, so over the past few weeks, I've been working on this project to see what's the best use and how can maybe bring <coughs> some improvements towards the city of Okoe's plans already taking place. Um, I found that approximately seven out of the ten homes, seven out of every ten home over there are owned by 
a corporation, LLC, or a trust, and it's been neglected or unmaintained. Um, I talked to the neighbors and I got to know them personally. I've also shared plans with them and um, really have gotten their approval and consent. Uh, they would be honored to have such there. Um, as Greg stated, he did mention to me that there were some changes they proposed and I agreed. We said for sure we would like to, uh, for curb appeal, do aesthetic on the side, stone edge or so, and also we can um, do a four foot iron rod fence. Um, any questions? How does the, Im the impervency, I'm, I may be saying that word wrong, right? With that such a big house on a 50 foot, how's the... In We're looking at um, a four bedroom, two bathroom, a little less than 2,000 square foot home. It's gonna measure about 34 point some in feet wide. Um, so it should still meet the seven and a half setbacks on all lots except the uh, Lee Street. Are you amenable to giving up the third lot as a park? Uh, giving it up as a park? Is that what we're talking about, right? Oh, no, we're no. talking about the, 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 the right of way. If you look here, Okay, so here, this road here, this is part of Lee Street. Uh -huh. This right here is a paper road. So what we're proposing is instead of making this um, a roadway in the future, keep it in as a right away with the city, but make it into um, a linear park okay. right here. Because if you look here, um, when we plan to expand on Lakewood yep. Avenue in the future, it would create a conflict if we put that road all the way through. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, that right of way contains a water line and sidewalk. Mm -hmm. If we vacate it, it goes back to where it came from. So it, it's just a short segment. Yeah. It wouldn't really make sense to, to cut through. So. I thought for some reason he said two lots at 50 and then one as a park. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. man, that's generous. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll add to your, your question. I think we're going to the same place here. Why not just make two lots instead of three? And then you don't even need to be here. You know, you're looking for you know, three variances. Now you've got the land space. You don't need to worry about front setback, rear setback, and you have plenty of room. And to be honest, it'd be a more marketable house. Um. Okay, like uh, Greg mentioned, so we, we do work in a couple of places. Um, Okoye's where I live. I definitely have a goal to improve Okoye in general as well. Um, why not just do two instead of three? Um, there's a shortage of houses for people that, for families, and the average houses in these, in these blocks are between 975 square foot up to about 12, 1300 square foot. With the pandemic, there's been a shortage of size and, and comfort for living, so it's, uh, I, I'm proposing that this may be a solution for people that are working from home, office space, such like that. You, you, did you say it was like 3,500 square feet? No, we're gonna be under 2,000 square foot living okay. space. Yeah, four bed, two bath, under 2,000. Okay. Does, uh, uh, the, the vertical, the two story, that yeah. it helps um, with the square footage. Yeah. So let me just make sure, Greg, if you can just say one more time, what are the stipulations you're asking for, for so to the approve the variance? we're asking for is that if we, um, for us to be able to recommend the variance is that we're asking for the enhanced architectural design. Okay. So you have the frontage of the home that faces Lyman, yep. but then also since you have that double frontage on Lee Street, we also propose that to look just as nice, so possibly that elevator porch and then more so, like, eyes on the street, too, so they could always have eyes in that area. Are you agreeing into that part? So I actually, I brought a little bit of the design here, which I can show you, and I passed it around for others. Um, here we have the proposed plan. And so what Greg is saying is maybe put a walk, uh, uh, a wraparound porch around the side and Correct. continue the stone amongst the side lower half, which cool. is fine. We agree. Um, he also mentioned put an iron rod iron rod four foot fence um, to kind of separate that and also that is fine. Okay, what was the second stipulation? Yeah, to put the iron rod fence. Okay. So we don't want, since that's gonna be a linear park, we yeah. want the, the transparency. The, yeah, to be, yeah, exactly. Well, was there a third one or is that it? That's it. Okay, you guys have any questions? Um, any any particular reason why you would wanna go aseptic as opposed to sewer since it's available? 
I would tend to well. do a sewer. Well, water is available, but water, water is not sewer. Yeah, sewer gotcha. is okay. available, so then you have to there. go do all gotcha. the calculus okay. part. Um, I thought two more words were available. Never mind. Okay. By law, sewer is available because the other statute is in my state. There is a 20 inch force main going up Blueford, up Ruiz up North Lakewood, but these individual lots could not connect to that 20 inch force main. Gotcha. There's not a lift station in the area and branch lines yep. to run. So at such time, it would be uh, septic would be his alternative. So I guess my last thing I would say is, you know, we, we've done some three lot splits like this before and we were, um, you know, the variances we've done have maybe gone from uh, 75 to 71 or right to 69 in that area right um, the only thing I would say is this does kind of lend to the the what the rest of those lots look like in that area because there are a lot of slim lots in that area and man that would be some great development there to get that corner up um, so that being said uh, anybody else have any other questions all right, we're going to, this is a public hearing. Is there anybody here to speak from the audience? Any emails or phone calls? No, we have received no emails or phone calls. Well, uh, this has been a pretty long debate so far, so I think we can move forward. Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, by the way, any, uh, anybody interested party, I said this before, is invited to offer comments and or questions by emailing citizens at okoy.org or calling 407-554-7118, uh, okay. So we're closing the public hearing. Um, thank you very much. So we need one motion for this. If there is a motion to be had, I'd like to hear it. Um, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, variance BR-21-02 subject to those conditions. I have a, uh, a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Can I get you to borrow this, please? Yeah. I've given the chairmanship over for a minute to Member Mellon, and I will be uh, performing a second for that. Um, we got a motion to approve and a second. Um, time to vote. All aye. In favor say aye. Aye. Nay. You gotta say what it is. Give motion right. denied. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> motion carries two to one. Thank you very much. Quick question to staff. Does, does this have to come back to us to review those conditions are met? No. Okay. You'll take care of that on our behalf, yeah. right? I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> All right. We need a conveyor belt. Yeah. Mike, did your guy come in or did that guy come in? Uh, um, not yet, but okay. we'll wait till after the SUMO to figure it out. Great. All right. Our next, uh, next on the board here, we have uh, Christian Brothers. This is going to be a variance VR 2101. Del Development Services Director, Mike Rumor. Yes, uh, thank you. This is a uh, sort of a, it's a variance, it's a waiver to a uh, preliminary site plan for Christian Brothers Automotive. This, this location is on the north side of uh, State Road 50 West Colonial Drive, the east side of McGuire Road. This would be behind the retail center that has the Qdoba, the Planet Smoothie, or the Smoothie King, and the uh, Care Spot. Um, and next to in the same place where the Popeye's chicken is. It's the old Sable Hotel spot. Yep. This is the last of the lots of that little commercial subdivision once the uh, hotel is raised. You can see we have a, a Popeye's, the strip center, stormwater track, and then this parcel. The, when we were going through site plan review for the commercial subdivision, the family uh, had wanted to just provide arbitrarily a larger setback on the north property line to the hotel to kind of protect it. And then I'll, I'll delve more into that here. Uh, the location is 11920 West Colonial Drive. Um, the 
zoning is C3 heavy commercial and it's for a proposed 5,000 square foot automotive repair facility. Uh, there's three zoning requests. It's to reduce the landscape buffer on the east side, the landscape buffer between the lot and the drainage track down to a minimum of one foot. It's also reducing a building setback to one foot from that drainage tract. Um, and then also reducing the setback on that northern side of, as part of the approved subdivision plan that was 35 feet to 20. Um, that lot line is typically a side, which would only have a 10 foot building setback. Uh, <clears throat> I'll go into that. So you see the, the lot is zone C3. This is the proposed Christian Brothers Automotive. Uh, the reason for the variances is to, in order to fit the facility in and uh, as an agreement with the hotel to not have any apparatus, anything on the back side, they're constructing this compressor room and that's taking the building setback to right at one foot to this lot line to the, to the stormwater track. So it's not a uh, lot line you know, being on the side property line adjacent to another parcel, it's to the internal uh, uh, stormwater track. Second is, so that's the reduction of the landscape buffer. I will show you that this pond is, we went out and I did, reviewed the pond, it has, the pond is fenced and outside of the fence and plenty of room inside and outside to maintain the pond, uh, the encroachment will not hinder um, that pond maintenance. And lastly is this building setback that the applicant at the time asked for to be 35 foot to be reduced to 20. Again, this lot uh, fronts McGuire and it would normally be a side setback. Uh, this is a internal drive aisle of 10 feet, but based off the site plan requesting 35 to 20 solely uh, as to mitigate that they are providing no uh, doors, no compressors, no apparatus on the backside to make noise. It'll be provided in this <coughs> attached building. And then you have, you've seen the Christian Brother Automotive around Central Florida. Um, we've been working with them for a number of years. We met them at a retail show and trying to find the, the right site for them. And so with that uh, request, uh, staff is in, you know, the variance criteria is hardship driven based off statutes and um, we are satisfied with this site plan review. I uh, wanted to be able to show you why the, the specifically the variances are requested for this site. The, the site will provide, if you've seen this, uh, this cross access to the hotel, if you, if you drive on the wrong side, you sink down in sand, but that cross access as part of the site plan will be maintained. The landscape buffer along McGuire will match with the retail center. Uh, there's no new driveway access points, nothing new to the site plan, just fitting it on um, that sort of pad ready. With that, I'll entertain any questions. Thank you. Any questions? The engineer's applicant is here. Now the building setback, he says one foot, but they have a door there. So is there a sidewalk over there as well? It's, it's a, it's a uh, green space, a curb, and more green space. Gotcha. So it's only one foot, so we don't have to worry about a pad yeah. or... Uh, the landing area, no, it's not a habited, inhabited area. Does that pond meet the 100-year the flood? I'm just kidding. <laughs> we ever hear, never have to hear about that again. We'll say, though, I do want to, this, this project, you know, we, 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 this project had a hotel with exterior rooms, right. and the family had the hotel behind it, and also the Red Roof Inn, and um, uh, we had a plan in, in, in this, this ground lease. This was the first ground lease as part of the project, but this retail center, it, it is reaching $40 triple net, which is very good for our co -ops. It's one of our shining points. And this, this development's turned out really nice. Thank you. Sweet. Do we have an applicant here to uh, speak on behalf? Come on up, sir, and give us your name, if you would. Thanks, Mike. Good evening. My name is Ben Ellis. I'm at 1615 Edgewater Drive, Orlando, Florida, 32804. Uh, we're representing our client, Christian Brothers Auto. We actually have a representative from Christian Brothers here uh, in the audience today that can also answer questions. We appreciate staff's time uh, this uh, past couple of months to go through this process and help us along the way. Uh, we do feel like we've got a project here that fits well 
within the master plan and with the commercial park as a whole. Um, this is certainly a unique property. Um, the out parcel is only 0.6 acres, uh, very tight space, and that's kind of what's led to this variance request. Typically an out parcel, and, and even mentioned the city code, is around one acre. When we start adding the setbacks um, or whatnot, it, it actually uh, hinders us to some degree. Also, there is a easement, utility easement on the south side that further prevents us from putting the building on the south side and uh, separating away. Um, so as was eloquently described before, uh, we do feel like given the current situation, it's a good fit and um, we're happy to answer any questions. Great, thanks. Do you have any, app uh, any questions for the applicant? Uh, I, I would say I would like a stipulation and we we were gonna put the same stipulation on the Firestone was no uh, no tires out front I, I know you're probably not a tire place but no tires with sleeves on them nothing like that in the, the parking lot so that would be my only thing is you know we we made sure when Firestone wanted to come in we said that so I want to make sure we say it now but uh, if there's no other questions, this is a public hearing. Uh, is there anybody present that'd like to speak about this? Anybody on the phone or email? No, we have received no Great. calls or emails. We did receive, I'm no. sorry? No, we did not. Can't hear today. All right, cool. We will close the, uh, the public uh, hearing. Um, close the public comment. Uh, you guys have any other questions about this? One question for my we don't need a sidewalk on that street here between behind the first shopping center to the, to the new that right there there's no internal sidewalk on the on the south side of the uh, <coughs> parcel it'll just be the asphalt there is a number of utility lines running through here okay. through the site yes and there's a sidewalk on mcguire already there's outside of the parcel in the right of way yes great and the sidewalk's not necessary there there's no sidewalk as part now. of the uh, site plan review for the preliminary subdivision plan. We did not, we're not successful in getting a, a pedestrian crossing at this location, which would be the, the optimum place. And, so there, and there's no sidewalks on the, uh, either side of the drive. You know, I'm sorry, that was my, a question. Uh, go ahead. Because my, my concern with that is we do have a fully functional hotel back there, and most people do park their cars and go to the front retail. Mm -hmm. uh, for one, one reason or another, they are going to. Yeah, but they're coming down that side road or, or the sidewalk, right? But we don't know where they're going to go. But at the same time, you know, they may go right. east, west. If if they come another from the, the dirt. good question, yeah. If, if they come from, remember which way is up. Uh, if they do not walk out and get on the sidewalk out here, if they cut Correct. through, you'll see from this point they will have a short walk in on pavement into this sidewalk in front of the building <coughs> to to this point. And get get some there. Sort. It's the same situation we have at the Twisty Treat with the shopping center, the the parking at Twisty Treat, then the drive out right into the retail center. I, I, I would ask why don't we have? It, it makes sense to have a, a crossing at that probably that curve and where the drive through is on the back side of that. Right here. Yes. Correct. At least a crossing. Because without the sidewalk, it would somewhat. I guess give people direction as to yeah. where, where you should be driving to to get to the front. But yeah. I think that's right where their drive through is, though. Yes, this is the drive through for the for the yeah, smoothie the, cane. I can't see it yet. It goes right into the dump, the, the drive through and the bypass lane and the parking. There's okay. parking, then the drive through, then the building. Okay. Well, if there's a way to make we'll, it happen, then yeah, we'll happen. take a look at it then. So uh, can, that, can that be a condition? Yeah, look at the sidewalks. You can make that. A, yeah. Look at walk try to make a pedest so pedestrian I, connection. I, ideally, not just a hotel. You may have yeah. someone who's waiting for their cars to be you know, yeah. re repaired. They go get a smoothie or whatever. And we're back. <coughs> yeah, we want people to be safe. So. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Member Mullen, do you have any questions? No, other than if you were to write this as a motion, how would you add a condition of a sidewalk? I, you want to add the condition of a sidewalk, you would, the yeah, you want, you would want to yeah, look the two, at. The, the tires and then the sidewalk. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I sidewalk. think we're looking to you to give us the correct verbiage. Oh, you, can, you can make a motion to approve with the condition that the tires have to remain inside and sidewalk. Okay. Sidewalk or some kind of walk back. 
Yes, the, the, it would be no, no livery whatsoever, livery, if that's the correct word, right, in the parking lot. But uh, so anyway, uh, we're, this is closed, so we need a, a motion, please. All right, I'll make that motion to recommend approval. Uh, variance request VR2101 <coughs> with the condition that tires and equipment remain inside and pedestrian access. And pre pedestrian access. We have a motion or we have a second? I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any other questions? Let's vote. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Good to go. Thank you very much. It was, uh, the, the, it was approved. Cleveland Browns win. It's the outcome. Okay. All right. So then our next one is going to be uh, CMEX Concrete Batch Plant at 450 Okoe Apopka Road. This is for a preliminary site plan LS 2021 -003. Development Service Director Murmur. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'd like to first state that uh, I think I know most all the members of the team for CMEX, and, and we've had a number of conversations, so we're all aware of where we stand, and we all have a good relationship, and um, we will when we come out of this. Uh, so I look forward to um, bringing this project before you. It's a preliminary large-scale site plan with waiver request. <coughs> the location of the property is on Okoe Popka Road. It's on the, the west side just north of Palm Drive, the intersection of Silver Star Road and Ocoee Popka Road. Ocoee Popka Road is an Orange County uh, owned and maintained road. The parcel is over 11 acres and it is wooded and has no use. On the south side, we have the Ocoee Palm Park, which has stormwater at the <coughs> path around it. There's a parcel to the south that is a, it's about one acre, and we had the Vermeer site south of that, and there's an open ditch uh, that runs from the pond, park, all the way to uh, Lake Apopka. The existing zoning is I-1 light industrial, and the future land use designation is <coughs> light industrial. The, this parcel is uniquely located in a couple of special areas that we've created in the city. The first would be, uh, it's located within the Ocoee Special Economic Enhancement District, which is a brownfield overlay that we placed on a portion of the city of Ocoee. Yeah, the brownfield overlay is a statutory uh, process where if you have a brownfield site, you're able to look at the property, see if they've been blighted due to some of that uh, industrial activity or that contamination. and, and set uh, through a resolution and a process, create an, an overlay that first entices uh, those properties, gives them opportunities to have uh, funds available for remediation. But just overall in the whole area, it provides an opportunity for jurisdictions, cities, counties to use uh, different tools for economic development. For instance, one of the economic development tools you can provide is a, you can waive impact fees, not, not credit it or have to pay from the general fund, you can just waive the fee in a brownfield overlay. Yeah. Second, the parcel which is located, identified right here, is located in the State Road 429 overlay, more particularly the business character area, which is a zoning overlay we placed on it in order to try to uh, provide a commerce and employment center with upgraded uh, ability to have mixed uses and opportunities for properties to work together for development. And so this is a zoning overlay. So th this project, as we've identified, sort of three big waivers they're requesting. It's sort of also requesting a waiver to this whole overlay. But we want to give you these, show you these specific <coughs> three items that um, I'll touch on here in a minute. And uh, within this, business character area, we've done two things. First, under a joint planning area agreement, uh, a new one with the Orange County in 2019, we identified Ocoee Popka Road as a significant road that we jointly worked together to try to accomplish a, street, a complete street segment. 
which would make Ocoee Popka Road in the future more of a Blueford Avenue, a trail, wide walk, um, street trees, more of an urban look, and not a four lane divided road. And that's a um, depiction of what the street section would look like. So what do we have here? We have the, the address is 450 Ocoee Popka Road. It's um, proposing a, it's on 11.23 acres. It's proposing a 1,750 square foot office building in this CMAX batch plant. It's got a, a shop, a uh, 7,000 square foot shop silos, which they're proposing to be enclosed. Uh, one of the waivers they're seeking is to have the enclosure reach 65 feet to enclose the silos in it. Um, they are, the second w sort of waiver is a uh, not having stuff fully enclosed. They'll have things three, uh, proposing open storage areas, three-sided enclosures. And the last waiver would be sort of in, in the I-1 light industrial, it calls for manufacturing to be done indoors. So the waiver is to have a, an element of their production, which they can explain better than me, be outside. So what are the issues before this, this commission? We have a preliminary site plan that's going through the public hearing process with, with waivers. This is the proposed site plan. I'll do a brief uh, overview. Uh, this is uh, Ocoee Apopka Road. Again, Ocoee Apopka Road is owned and controlled by Orange County. They're showing uh, turn lanes proposed. They are working with Orange County uh, preliminarily on what those would be. They have entrance to the site and curving the entrance around into what this concrete batch plan would be. You have the silos located here, they would be enclosed. You have, this is the outside storage of materials. They have a two buildings, an office and sort of a warehouse. Uh, the, the rest of the site, it has a couple of types of stormwater collection. <coughs> This is a more graphical depiction of what it would look like from the aerial. And then uh, renderings to show the type of architecture that you would, they would prescribe for in the buildings on site and closing the silos would be of the Florida vernacular, which is called for in our business character overlay. Uh, the, some renderings here, they're proposing, I'll talk about some of the buffering, they're proposing to have lush landscaping uh, that will uh, provide buffering uh, when you're at the site. <coughs> Go to the, <coughs> so what does this mean? What does this site mean? It, it, it's bringing a, uh, a plant, an operation that has aspects of outdoor manufacturing to it. It's, it's utilizing the full 11 acres. There is a right-of-way dedication proposed along the front, so that acreage will be reduced of the overall footprint, depending on the size of right-of-way, whether it's 35 foot, 30 foot, we're, we're still looking at that. It has a separation, a front setback, sort of to the, from the right-of-way line with an, with the they, with the uh, dedication to sort of the the active area of a, over 80 feet, about 100 feet. It has uh, some structured ponds, and then it has final ponds. As you can see, they show with landscaping around the pond. They are offering to look at this area. I think they own this parcel right here, wraps around. They are they are. They have told the city we look at if, if we can use this remnant piece as a way as being adjacent to the park that's uh, in the discussion. <coughs> um, these, these operations as the materials are stored outside, I, I would submit if you looked at an aerial, that, that white material just have, is all over the site. And with the next step of this process that goes forward, the civil site plan approvals. 
this type of a use that is not required to get a stormwater permit from St. John's River Monitor Management District. They do what is called a package permit with FDEP. Then they just, with this, they just show this, the, the city engineer, the city that they're not putting any drops of water off the site. And um, so we will not have, it will not have to abide by the Lake Apopka rule that we've, we've talked about in projects in the area. Um, they, don't, they don't permit this through St. John's. And as well, uh, they may clarify this, but we believe that they are also required to have a pollution permit with FDEP as well. So this, <coughs> this area that we've created um, with the first, with the brownfield overlay, this, the COE Special Economic Enhancement District, uh, we have done that as an economic development tool. We've been successful with a project just near this parcel with the Vermeer uh, Southeast headquarters I'll show you. As well as with the business character area, we are, I'll show you a project we have on the north end. Uh, I have two projects proposed on this corridor right now. Um, meant most of them are of a flex office, more of a light industrial development, all indoors. But this, this area is really turning into a uh, employment generating generation area. We still have a long way for this area to build out. We have uh, proposed extension of Pine Street um, that's not designer engineered. We're still in the infancy and have three, uh, two pro three projects proposed in this corridor right now, this being one of them. Obviously, they, the, uh, with the process they use to manufacture, there will be equipment that is run in scooping up the material from these bins which are stored outside and moved to the silos to be um, processed. And I'll let them uh, offer up their, their process more than that. But there are, you know what concrete trucks look like. Those will be moving around and coming to the site. So uh, we looked at this and said, you know, I, I could have denied potentially the application based off determining it. it's an I-2 heavy industrial zoning, but we're, we work with people, we work with good people. CMEX is a great company, obviously, uh, CMEX. And we said, Let, let's, they said, give us a chance to show you a site plan. Let us give us a chance to show you how we operate and what kind of neighbor we are. And uh, so we we're taking this with waivers. But I will tell you that the, the, the waiver for manufacturing outdoors, the waiver for outside storage and materials uh, are definitely hot button items for I-1. Uh, as we deal with developers in the future, they'll look at an aerial point and say, what about that parcel? It has outside storage. Yeah. The height, 65 feet is high, what, you know, kind of like under a variance. Can, can, what's the best you can do? Can you get it lower? Can you get it 45, 50 foot? What do we um, do on the hotel out on 50? The hotel out on 50 is almost 60 foot. 60 foot. What's right the hospital on, at? The hospital is 80. Okay. And the city center is um, eight, eight stories on the arterial road. Well, I mean, we should be in the 50s anyway. I mean, 45, 50s to begin with. But So I want to kind of just go over. Um, I'm not going to belabor this. It's going <coughs> to have on some of the issues we have. I've got 11 acres in a target area that I could have a number of businesses operate. It's going to be 11 acres of a silo and employees coming and going. The utilities for the site, there's a 12 inch water main on the east side of the road and they will have to run sewer. As part of their production process, they will connect these buildings to the potable water. The rest of the site, they will need to utilize a well. Um, so uh, as, as we plan our utilities in the future, we ran a 12 inch water main. We have capacity we want to use. We need customers to pay. This is not going to be a, a, a large utility generator, build generator. <coughs> uh, outside materials, it's, it's, it shows you that it's outside manufacturing because they have a package plant, sort of a, a stormwater permit. Height of 65, as I said, you know, we've talked, can you get 45, 50, 55? So 65, it's, it's hard to judge that. Is it right, is it wrong? Um, the, the locations on State Road 50 are a little bit different area as this builds up. Uh, some of the light industrial 
if it develops on the west as the overlay, would have 38 foot dock height buildings. Uh, but it's still what, what comes in first sort of drives that height. Right. Taxes. I've, I've got just a couple examples. Uh, this is the property adjacent in, in Winter Garden on Plant Street. It pays Winter Garden $2,400 a year in property taxes. 11 acres. I, the, I just surmise that the uh, emphasis in economic development is trying to achieve something better than that. Uh, oh, I missed, I didn't get the wrong one. Uh, this is the one in Osceola County. They'll, they might show you $2,800 a year in property taxes. And so this is the, in this overlay, the State Road 429 business character area, we have three sites. Uh, two of them are in uh, process as well as, as this, uh, the Vermeer is finishing up if you've been by there. This is the Vermeer Southeast. This is on the southern bookend of the Ocoee Popco corridor in the business character area. Uh, this is a uh, large, uh, it's the home office for Vermeer Southeast in the Caribbean. They have a retail showroom on the bottom, offices on the top, and then the uh, where they put their and service their equipment. <coughs> Another one that you're, you're going to be seeing next month is uh, McCraney, the Progress Commercial Park. Uh, we've, we've worked out on a staff level uh, a plan to provide uh, Class A light industrial on the north end of this. 480,000 square foot. We've got 25,000 square foot buildings up front, 50,000, then going to the larger. That's at the Blueberry Farm? That's the Blueberry Farm, yeah. yes. And last, uh, this was at the last meeting. This is a uh, building just on the east side of the Vermeer where we have a 29,000 square foot flex office with a uh, 30,000 square foot dock height. And so this, this area is really starting to take off. We're seeing success as part of the emphasis we have here. Um, so let's recap, it's located in the seed, it's in the business character area, manufacturing is done outside, uh, no St. John's permits, package plant through FDEP, development review committee did not recommend this, and my staff recommendation is to uh, deny the preliminary large scale site plan and waivers based off the following heavy industrials it's more it's a heavy industrial use uh, it's consi inconsistent with the overlay and the brownfield area and it's incompatible and what's going to want to be located behind it next to it and so with that i'll entertain any questions and there's a, a very talented team here with them to speak so you are denied you 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 recommend denial of the Recommended denial of the preliminary large-scale site plan and waivers. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> no, this this is a good, first. It was a good presentation you gave. I, I was going to preface that I did, I did want to tell you there's a talented team, and this is my first project that I've had to outright recommend denial on. We have had a lot of discussions. We've, we've, we've well, massaged I this. I, I generally, when I deal with good developers, which these, these people are uh, and their team, it's okay. Let me try to get you the best plan. I don't want. Yeah. And and Dave, Dave met me along the way as much as they can. You guys have any questions for staff before we bring um, them up? What What is the specific uh, zoning for for business like this? I two heavy industrial within the city of Okoe. I two. Yes. Okay. So, in our city, where would this project be better suited? Whereabouts? In our city, Enterprise, Enterprise Street, that heavy industrial park. Yeah. Low density. Yes, the, the last large piece of I-2 property we had that was buildable is where the Sunbelt rental went on. Yep. And, yeah. uh, and you can see they utilize every square Impression. inch of that property. Go ahead. What, what's the closest residential area to this? How, how Across far? the street. Yeah. It's <laughs> so a really good question. <laughs> I'll let me go to the land use map. And so let me show you. So what we've done is we've through a ordinance, we adopted an overlay and sort of these trees kind of outline the boundaries right. to promote mixed use development, smaller density next to retail with some office with the opportunity for industrial adjacent to the 429.
that's what the vision sees, opportunities where those are cohesive. There is no back of property because you may have a, a 110 unit multifamily adjacent to the off, to the commercial park. Right, so so we'll what you're gonna see in the map though is we haven't done a large scale land use amendment changing all of these properties yet. It's on a case by case basis. Right, but you already have existing homes that are close by. You have there's some divisions just to the north of there. I think. There's some across the street. There's some down the road. So you do have, as this is set up, this is the ditch. There is residential on the west side of the ditch. Correct. And they are, um, well, well, many of them are in the county. They've got chickens that will tell you they're in the middle of nowhere. Well, where I'm going with it is, you know, obviously the health concerns with, you know, um, airborne pathogens. And I know the EPA recommends, you know, like the five, or there's a five mile, you know, they call it like the hot zone you know, around, you know, the cement plant plants. So I don't know how this would work with it being close to, you know, the, the newer version of the businesses, people, you know, the pictures show people walking by left and right, you know, with a, a good windy day here with um, these you know, outside facilities, you know, it may create a, an unsafe environment to residents and um, business employees, as well as patrons walking up and down the street. Yeah, let's ask the uh, let's ask the the folks. Have them come on up because I have a bunch of questions. Thanks, Mike. That was a good one. Just state your name, if you would, when you get up here. Good evening. I'm Julie Kendick Schrader with Greenberg Trarick. 450 South Orange Avenue, Orlando, Florida, uh, here today on behalf of the applicant. Um, with me today, I have Sig Bo and Stephen Blanton from CEMEX. We have Jay Klima from Klima Weeks Engineering, who's our civil engineer on this, along with Selby Weeks. And then we have Elliot Jameson and Ryan Kingry uh, from Jameson Commercial Development. Um, so to start off with, I was actually gonna make the same comments that Mike made earlier. You know, we have been working on this for um, an extended period of time. Um, I think our working with staff has been um, very positive. Staff has stated their issues and we have done multiple um, changes to our plan uh, in an attempt to accommodate those concerns. Unfortunately, we stand here before you today with a recommendation of denial. Um, so even though we've worked well together, we haven't been able to get to the point where we're on the same page. Um, but we're moving forward now, so I <coughs> briefly wanted to describe a little bit about the project. So to start with, um, you know, to say it's a ready-mix plant, to me, that's a really broad term. And there are ready-mix plants that you can think of in your mind that are big with the multiple silos where the product is mixed on site yeah. and the final product is put into a truck and is then transported. But that is not what is proposed for this location. Um, what is proposed for this location is basically we will have the materials and so when you look in the, um, the bays here, what will be in those bays are basically earth materials. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, basically earthen materials, not um, outdoor equipment or vehicle storage or anything along those lines. It's, I won't say dirt piles because that's way too simplistic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but dirt rock piles. Crushed rock, all that kind of stuff. Right, so what, what this site is proposed for is not actually a full blown, we're gonna make the concrete here. Um, this will be where the aggregate and the materials are taken inside the building, um, and then they will be deposited into a truck, which that will occur inside the building, and the truck will leave the site. Um, and the actual product will be manufactured, mixed, made, um, off the site boundary. Um, another thing, so when we were talking to staff about some of the concerns in this area, and I think it's great that there is so much development happening in the area, but the reality is you, you can't have development without us. And we, it's a time sensitive product. So these products can only stay viable for a certain period of time in the truck, um, which puts us in a position where we have to find locations that we can load the trucks and get them to the sites within the fungible time of the product before it's no good anymore. Um, so we have geographic limitations on where we can site 
What we did in this situation, uh, our team is unaware of a facility like this in the state of Florida. We actually dug deep and went to some of the more urban areas like California um, to look at examples of how we could move this facility where in our opinion our manufacturing process is actually located in inside of a building and that's what we've proposed <coughs> here. Um, so this, is, this may very well be the first, if it gets approved and it's able to be built, this may be the first location of its type in the state of Florida which is basically where we have the silos, where the trucks are loaded. Um, that will all be located within an enclosure uh, that we have done in the Florida vernacular in keeping with the um, business character overlay. So those are just some of the points that I wanted to raise. Um, again, I have our team here to answer yeah. questions. Um, oh, one, one point I did want, want to raise is the permitting for this on the air and on the stormwater is through a general permit at DEP. Um, and basically there are very stringent environmental requirements. You will not see contaminants leaving this site, um, particularly because most of the activity is, or the activity with loading the trucks is gonna occur within, within a building. Um, so Cemex would not be in a situation where we're putting carcinogens or um, dangerous materials uh, into the air or onto adjacent properties. Uh, so what we have done is we've uh, done our best to enclose the operations at this site uh, with the, uh, the exception of our earthen materials that we have uh, located in the bins, the, the three-sided enclosure. Um, it is a large site and it enables us to do some significant buffering um, and some significant landscaping while at the same time being geographically located so that we can service um, all the other great projects that are also happening in the area. So again, as I said, our team is here. Um, we're happy to answer any questions that you may have or if they want to point out to me that I've missed something. <laughs> Thank you. Right. So one of my questions, the first question is, what's the difference in this plant, the C-Mix plant in Winter Garden? That's a fully uh, ready mix plant, is that the difference? So this will be, oh, do you want to come up? So this will be the same type of plant, but it, it will be enclosed. Oh, is that a Cimex plant? Is that not a Cimex plant anymore? Well, I, I didn't tight. think so. Oh, it's right. tight. Yes, What's sir. the difference in that plant and your plant? So if you, sorry, Julie. So this is enclosed. Yes, and I'm Steve Blanton. I'm with Cimex, uh, Orlando, Cala. And if you look at this facility, completely enclosed. So the trucks were back under there. Right, where you would typically pull up to a ready mix facility and you would see it sitting under the silos, you're not going to see that in this, this facility. Uh -huh. And the, uh, all of the bays, are they going to be watered down, or the, are they all going to be watered down, all the, you know, the material? Yeah, the I material, you water those area. down? Yes. So there's sprinklers on, on all of those. Yeah, and I can speak to that a little bit. Basically, the material is watered down. One of the FDOT requirements for their uh, use is that the material be saturated for, I believe, 72 hours. Um, so we do keep the materials watered down. You, you guys, gentlemen, have any questions? What's, what's your busiest trucking time for a plant like this? So it was nice to see those, good question. It was nice to see those other buildings that were on the agenda. Most of that is done before anybody wakes up. So our business, I would say the majority of it happens before the sun ever gets up. So when we're utilizing the roads and doing those warehouses, uh, those big spaces like that, early morning. <clears throat> so yeah, my question was gonna be that, that, that road's gonna get off full, you know, once we do all that stuff down there at Fuller's Cross and all that. So are you gonna be sending I mean, you're gonna be having semi trucks come in there in the mornings and our uh, uh, concrete trucks. And so yeah, so our equipment when we when we're running, it'll be early morning to, to refurbish the, the stockpiles. There'll be tankers. There'll be uh, trucks hauling the material, the raw materials, in there. All right. And uh, my my only last question is about the height of that building. It is a little it is a little tall. There's nothing other than the hospital that's that big 
and I know I, I'd like to see us move our height requirements, but that's a little bit bigger than I think. Um, I think when we were discussing that originally, I mean, to stay within the, the design, the building's gonna add some height as well. To enclose it, you're obviously adding height. Okay. I've, I've got some I've got some concerns. Um, as Mike said before, this is not uh, a Cody Popka Road is not a road that's going to be a four-lane highway anytime soon, or it's not proposed to be that. Um, it is within a Cody Special Economic Events District, so I'm not sure how this this is going to contribute to that. Uh, as well as I guess the brownfield part it might be perfect, but obviously we've had increase density there, so maybe we should even change that from brownfield to just, but I don't, um, those, those are, I mean, I, I mean, how does this contribute to, to those to those two special areas that we have? I mean, how does, how does this business, you know, uh, contribute to that? You know, I would say with respect to the brownfields, you know, it's interesting because if an area is designated a brownfield, it already has a perception of contamination or blight. Um, so, you know, we're redeveloping a currently <coughs> vacant piece with something that's gonna be architectural, architecturally pleasing. And from an architectural standpoint, will fit in between the additional landscaping and architectural will fit in with the, the business area. And um, I-1 is already the zoning on the property. So even with the overlay, if the decision is this is an I-1 use, it would be permitted um, under the under the existing zoning. Correct, but again, when, when, when I look at those numbers with tax revenue, sewer, and water revenue, I don't see how this business fits under the seed or call it special economic enhancement. I don't, how does it contribute? I mean, what's, what's the, I mean, what's your employee rating? I mean, employees, stuff like that, uh, jobs. I don't, I don't see how it contributes. It, it, it's one business occupying 11 acres plus, but I don't, um, I, I, I wish it was someone enterprise. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, it's, it's one business. Obviously, we will have employees, and then we form the foundation of other businesses that can build in the area by a product that they need to succeed and be, be constructed. <laughs> But I do see the need for your business though, because we do have a lot of development. Like you said, you have a product that roads, new businesses, and like I said, it is a fungible mm -hmm. product. So mm -hmm. uh, to answer your question, I can't say we're going to employ 200 people at $200,000 a year. That's yeah. That's not what's going to happen. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank well, you, and again, thanks to Mr. Rumor. Um, thank you for your consideration this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is also a public hearing. I would like to uh, see if there's anybody present out in the in the chambers here that'd like to speak on behalf of this. Do we have any calls or emails? No. All right, we're going to close the public hearing. Does anybody else have any other questions for staff? Are there any other questions at all? Uh, my thing, Mike. So the you you had three waivers. One was the height. What was the other? Was there three yes, waivers? Uh, a waiver to have not everything, <clears throat> the storage be fully enclosed. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is a the manufacturing aspect yeah. of the site. Under the I-1, manufacturing is restricted manufacturing indoors. There is an element of this, uh, albeit I, I say a large element because it's in an expanse area of number of acres that is outdoor uh, manufacturing. Okay, so on this we're going to need uh, one one motion is necessary for this uh, preliminary site plan. Anybody uh, want to do that? Uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to deny the application for preliminary site plan, site plan LS-2021-003. We have a motion to deny. Is there a second? I second. You know, before we vote, I would say I think this is a, I think it's a, a great thing to have. I think we should have something like this. I think there's some tweaks that need to happen. The, uh, 
the, the height of the building is probably one thing, the way the, the materials are stored. But uh, I hope you, if you know this does go through as a denial, that y'all work together and find a new way to fly on this because that's a pretty Somewhere cool deal. Else. No, I mean, I think it worked there. I think they just probably have some more stuff to take care of. But that being said, we have a, a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries as the denial. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the last item, Mr. Jose, is in attendance. All right. So if we can move item K up to that and we can hear his his uh, annexation. It's not a variance. We will do that. So item K and annex AD Mims Road annexation. If we can move that one up. Jeez Louise, this thing's huge. We're moving to K? Yes, moving to K. What do you know? I don't have K on my list. Chair, I, I pulled it up for you. Oh, you already moved it. Sweet. There, look, there, look, it's next. Oh, yes. How do you like that? We got a great clerk. <laughs> it's on, uh, it, it's right underneath CM, uh, some X. Item K. All right, so this is going to be uh, 8667, 80 Men's Road, Covington Holdings, LLC. We're going to need two motions on this. This is going to be an annexation and a rezoning. We're going to be looking at annexation AX042110, rezoning RZ210413. Mr. Hines. Okay, so the first annexation and rezoning we have tonight is located at 866780 Mims Road. So it's primarily located off of AD Road, 80, 80 Mims Road. Here is um, a pop of Island, so that's the main road that runs. And then further down, you have Clark Road, but I wasn't able to capture that in the area, but this is a, a pop of island here, just to give you an area. It's a pretty big piece of property for what we're normally annexed. It's um, 9.94 acres in size. Currently, the property is A1, which is rural agriculture in Orange County. And we're proposing to rezone that to A1, general agriculture for the city of Ocoee. This is just an area view showing you the property. So right now, um, there is a structure on there. It's a single family home. And right here is just the zoning map. So you see on the north, east, and west is surrounded on, um, by a code. You have the R1A zoning, and then on top of that is the A1. And it's just is a future land use map showing you that all that area is going to be low density residential. So as staff, we are recommended to rezone the property from A1 Rural Agriculture to or, um, from Orange County to City of Ocoee A1 Agriculture. And um, staff recommend that. We've, we've dealt with, a, had a lot of people inquire about this property. Obviously, you see the subdivision on each side. And people are like, hey, I want to do the same thing that's on the right with my property. This property, this subdivision on the east side was developed before uh, the, the requirements for septic came in. There is not sewer in the area. The closest sewer is down around the corner over here. And I've dealt with a number of people that have walked away from this property, this gentleman, I purchased the property he said you know what I want to annex into the city and let's just we'll work out trying to get future lots as in the future so I just wanted to commend him for saying you know let me let me just come in the city get that process over with so that's why we're here today we're gonna to work with him to try to get uh, lots in the future there whatever we can with either water and septic potable water and septic or if we can get sewer closer to the area so just worry right. Is that why it's an um, agriculture? Yes, we're just zone? bringing it in. It'll have to be rezoned probably okay. to PD or something, but we'll work that out okay. in the future. Did you one time tell me we don't actually have an A1 in the city? Our land, our future land use designation, our future land, our comprehensive plan does not have an agricultural land use, so we don't, do not really utilize as a future to have land. So it's ag in the county, we'll bring it in ag. It's, we've had some properties, uh, as an example, we brought in this piece and we just did an ordinance for annexation. Right. 
and that it messes people up. So it, it has the county zoning on it still. So we've gone away from doing the unclassified, just annexing it straight, no, and we're, we're giving it a A1. It helps people understand that yes, it is in the city, and then let's. That's the townhomes, right? Where the railroad track goes Yes, through? it is, the townhomes yeah. to the east of that. Is there sewer yeah. going in there? The sewer ends in inside off, off the road near the fire station. Uh -huh. So, but it's going to be. This is all on septic. All these subdivisions are on septic. To make a lot today, if it's on well and septic, you have to have a half acre. If it's on potable water and septic, you have to have a quarter acre. Uh, the variance we had early on with the 50 foot wide lots, yep. those there was, like we call them antiquated platted lots. Those old platted lots have some grandfathering in for with that they are they were platted and, and now the code says just join it up together to meet zoning but they do have the right to apply for septic on, on those being less than a quarter acre but when you make a new lot today mm -hmm. it has to abide by that gotcha. so we'll work with the gentleman to try to get something that meets code we'll look every way to try to stretch what we can to have a good development and just wanted to bring that to your attention great thank you does anybody have any questions for staff Great. Is there uh, uh, the applicant here want to say anything? Yes, the applicant is here. No, he doesn't want to say anything. Great. Uh, we're going to open it up to the public hearing. Is there anybody here that wants to speak on uh, about this matter? Nope. Do you have anybody on the phone or an email? No. Thank you. We're going to close the public hearing, bring it back to the dais. Anybody have any last minute questions? All right. We're going to need two motions for this. The first one will be the... Uh, Annexation, can I have a motion, please? I'll make that motion to recommend annexation of 866780 Mims Road, um, AX 0421 10. Thank you very much. We have a motion by Member Mellon. Do we have a second? I'll second that. We have a second by Member Forges. Any other questions before we vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. So is approved. Thank you. Second motion is going to be for the rezoning. Can I have a motion, please? I'll make that motion too. Uh, I recommend um, um, recommend a motion to um, rezone eight six six seven eighty Mims Road um, RZ twenty one zero four thirteen. Member Mellon makes a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I second that. Second by Member Forges. Any other questions before we vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? That carries. It's approved. Thank you very much, sir. Good luck. All right. The next one up, we're going back to D. This is 277 13th Avenue, De La Tour property. This is also going to need two motions, an annexation, which is AX052111, and rezoning of RZ210515. Mr. Hines. So the next property we have for annexation and rezoning it is the, the De La Torre property. This is where it's located. So it's located um, near off of Peters Avenue and North Lakewood Avenue. Off. The current property is 0 0.17 acres in size and they're gonna be rezoned from R2 Orange County, which is single family, to R1 Orange County. This is just an area view of the property. It is currently vacant. This is just the surrounding zoning showing the R1 zoning. This is just the future land use, the low density residential. So it is in line with the future land use. And as staff, we do recommend the rezoning from R2 Orange County single family to the R1 City of Macquarie single family to R1. And if you have any questions regarding that, I can answer those. Thank you very much. Any questions for staff? Is the applicant here? All right, we'll open it up to the public hearing. Is anybody here to speak on behalf? Anybody on the phone or on email? No. All right, we'll close the public hearing. Does anybody have any last minute questions? All right, we need two motions. The first one will be on an annexation. How do you plead? Well, Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve 277 13th Avenue, annexation AX 0521. Member Forge's uh, motion to approve. We have a second? Second. Second by Member Mellon. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? That carries as an approval. Second, we're going to need for the rezoning. I will also make a motion to approve uh, 
the rezoning of 277 13th Avenue, RZ21, U of I 15. Thank you, Member Forges. Do we have a second? Second. That's Member Mellon. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposes? It approves. Thank you very much. Next business is item E, which is 5... 501 Second Street, Laban property. We're going to need two motions for this as well. One for an annexation on AX052112 and another one on rezoning RZ210516. Uh, Gregory Hines. So the next property we have is the Laban property. It's 501 Second Street. This is located just off of um, East Silver Star Road and Center Street. The property is a quarter of an acre in size, and currently it's R1 Orange County single family. This is just the area view of the property. There is a home there. And at, this is just the zoning map showing the surrounding zoning, the future land use map as well. And as staff, we are recommend rezoning that from R1 Orange County single family to city of Okoye R1 which is single family dwelling. And if you have any questions regarding this annexation rezone, I can answer those questions. Thank you very much. So any questions for staff? We have sewer there, right? Here, no, there's, um, those are septic. This area here, yeah, it's septic. There's water that runs through there, but not sewer. <coughs> okay. Any other questions? All right, is the applicant here? Uh, let's open it up to the public hearing. Anybody here for the, anybody on email or phone? No. Thank you. We'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the dais. Any last minute questions? All right, we need two motions. The first one's gonna be on the annexation. Can I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to recommend annexation of 501 2nd Street, um, AX052112. That is a motion by Member Mellon. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Second by uh, Member Forges. Can I get uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? That is approved. The next one will be the rezoning. Can I get a motion? I'll make the motion to approve or recommend approval of rezoning 501 Second Street, number RZ210516. Thank you, sir. Can I get a second? I'll second that. That is a uh, motion by Member Mellon, uh, seconded by Member Forges. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That is approved as well. Thank you very much. Next business is going to be 499 Second Street, Okoe Reynolds Trust Property. We're going to be doing two motions for this annexation for AX042107 and rezoning RZ210410. Mr. Hines. So the next property is the 499 Second Street. This is this bus up to that property we just um, approved. It's East Silver Star Center Street again. This, the property here is also just a little bit over a quarter of an acre in size. This is just the area view of the property. That's the zoning map. And then this is the future land use map. And as staff, we are recommend the rezoning from R1 single family Orange County to City of Akori R1 single family dwelling. And if you have any questions regarding this annexation, I can answer those. Thank you very much. Any questions for staff? Is there anybody here for the applicant? Anybody here for the, we'll open it up to the public hearing. Any emails or phone calls? No. Great, thank you. We'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the dais. Any last minute questions? Thank you. Uh, Okoye Rental Trust should get a gold star for bringing as many annexations as they can. All right, so we'll need a, uh, all those in favor? Oh wait, did we get a motion? Yeah, yeah a motion, motion for us. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking about dinner. I need a motion for the annexation, please. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to recommend approval for 499 Second Street, annexation AX042107. Motion by Member Forges, second. Second. Second by Member Mellon. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? That approves. Second is going to be the rezoning. Mr. Chair, I'll also make a motion to recommend approval for 
499 Second Street, rezoning RZ21. Thank you. We have a, uh, a motion for approval of the rezoning. Do I have a second? Second. We have a, uh, a motion by Member Forges and a second by Member Mellon. All those in favor? Aye. All those Aye. opposed? Motion carries and approved. Next one is going to be four, 437 Second Street, Okoy Rental Trust Properties. Okay, this also neighbor that property, because basically all of these are going to be like a domino effect. They all neighbor each other. So that's why we're getting them all in. I have a question. Since they're all the same owner, we can't wrap them into one motion and name all the, you know, do all the annexations in one and do all the rezonings in another? Yeah, I think we asked this last could, time. Yeah, could we do? For, for your and, and we land on like Joe and Benjamin. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is 437. Like I was saying earlier, it's a quarter of an acre. This is just an area view. And they're acting to rezone from Orange County all one single family to City of Macquarie all one single family. And if you have any questions regarding that, I can answer those questions. Any questions for staff? Is the applicant here? We will open it up to the public. Anybody here to speak? Is there any emails or phone calls? No. Perfect. We will close the public hearing, bring back to the dice. Any last minute questions? Can I please get the first uh, motion for the annex? Annexation. Yes. I'll make the motion to recommend annexation at 437 Second Street, uh, number AX042108. Thank you. We have a motion for an approval by Member Mellon. Do we have a second? I second that. We have a second for approval by Member Forges. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? That carries. We'll now go, that approves and carries. We'll go to the rezoning. You need a motion? Your turn. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to recommend approval to rezone 437 Second Street, rezoning RZ210411. Thank you very much. We have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Motion to approve by Member Forges, uh, seconded by Member Mellon. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? And that approves as well and carries. Next on the docket. 504 Third Street, Okoy Rental Trust. Mr. Hunt. So the next property we have at 504 Third Street. This property is also a quarter of an acre in size. This is just the area view of it. The zoning map, future land use. And for this property, we do recommend a rezoning from Orange County R1 single family to the city of Okoy single family dwelling R1. And if you have any questions, I can um, answer those. Thank you very much. Any questions for staff? Is the applicant here? We'll open it up to the public for comments. Anybody on the phone or email? No. Great, thank you. We'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the dice. Any questions? Can I please have the first motion for an annexation? I'll make the first motion for annex recommend annexation of 504 Third Street, um, number AX052114. Thank you very much. Do we have a second? I second that. All right, we have a uh, motion to approve by Member Mellon, a motion to second by uh, Member Forges. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Annexation approves. Going to the rezoning. And Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve rezoning for 504 Third Street, RZ21015. Did you say, are we on 502, aren't we? 504. 504. Five we five have a, uh, uh, yeah, a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Five Thank four. you. We have a, uh, a motion to approve by Member Forges, a second by Member Mellons. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed. That annexation approves as well. Okay, now 502 Third Street, Okoy Rental Trust Properties, Gregory Hines. So this is 502 Second Third Street, I mean, I'm a, I apologize. The property is a little bit under a quarter of an acre. This is just an aerial view of it. You have the um, zoning map, and then also the future land use map. And at staff, we do recommend a rezoning from R1 single family Orange County to 
city of Akoi R1 single family dwelling? And if you have any question regarding this annexation or rezone, I can answer those. It's allowed to be under a quarter because it's already, is that what we just talked about a minute yeah, ago? Yeah, it's allowed to be. Cool, thank you. Any questions for staff? Is the applicant here? Is there anybody in the, we'll open it up to the public. Anybody would like to speak? Do we have any emails or calls? No. We're gonna close the public hearing, bring it back to the dais. Any last second questions? We're gonna need two motions on this as well. I'll take one for the annex, please. I make a motion to recommend annexation of 502 Third Street, number AX052115. Thank you very much. Do we have a second? I'll second that. We have a, a, a motion to approve by Member Mellons, a second by uh, Member Forges. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? That approves. Uh, the second one's going to be on the rezoning. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to recommend approval for rezoning of 502 Street, RZ 210519. Thank you very much. Do we have a second? Second. All right, we got a motion to approve by Member Forges, and we have a second by Member Mellon. Can we please uh, vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? That is also approved. All right. Last but not least, this is going to be 436 Third Street, Okoy Reynolds Trust Property, Gregory Hines. So this is 436 Third Street. This is just the location map. The property here is a quarter of an acre. This is just the aerial view again. The zoning, surrounding zoning map, and then also the future land use map. And as staff, we do recommend this rezoning and annexation as well. The rezoning is gonna be from Orange County R1, single family, to City of Akoi R1, single family dwelling. And if you have any questions regarding this annexation, I can answer those questions. Thank you very much. Any questions for staff? Is the applicant here? We'll open it up to the public. Is there anybody who'd like to speak on this matter? Wow, surprise. Uh, any uh, phone calls or? No. Okay, we're gonna close it up for the public hearing back to the dais. Any uh, questions for staff before we vote? No, we should de deny one just to mix it up. Just because, bit. right? Just so we can show up, it. right, to those meetings? <laughs> I get it. Because he's never here. <laughs> we need two motions. The first one's going to be an annexation. All right, I'll make a motion to recommend annexation uh, 436 Third Street, number AX052116. Thank you very much. Do we have a second? I'll second that. We have a motion to approve by Member Mellon. We have a second by Member Forges. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Annexation carries as approved. And next, we have the rezoning. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to recommend approval for rezoning of 436 Third Street, RZ 210520. Perfect. Thank you very much. So we have a, a, a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you very much. We have a motion by Member Forges, a second by Member Mellons to approve the rezoning. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. That carries as well as the approval for the rezoning. Miscellaneous project status report. Mr. I just Rubin. want to state the Coey Rentals Trust uh, believes in the vision that Coey has in our downtown, and they've made the they're stepping up. They're buying a lot of properties, and properties. Some of these homes are multiple homes on one well. They're paying to run water. They're uh, upgrading the tenants. Um, so I just want to state that we have. Um, Next commission, June 15th, will be the vote uh, to fill the open seats. As you recall, we have uh, Mr. Forges, we, we have um, Levon's seat, we have the, the seat Mr. Keller vacated, and then we have the alternate Good. up. And um, <clears throat> so that'll be done at the June 15th city commission meeting. There are six names in the hat, including the, the two uh, that are on. So they were they were renominated to be up for votes, but the, uh, so their names are in the hat again. Uh, and with that, we will have a July Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. And we will have a new sitting commission. Um, and we were looking to have Mr. Upsall provide a quick before the planning and zoning meeting, it starts at 6.30, maybe meet at 6 and go over the sunshine rules 
uh, would be for the new members, and I would provide a meal with that. Uh, we could we could do it in 109. You could do a quick run through. Um, try to be here at six sharp. We'll be done by 6:25 to go at uh, 6:30. We will email you that. Just want to give you that heads up. If what you, date is that? It would be July the 13th. Okay, is okay. the next planning and zoning meeting Tuesday, Perfect. July the 13th. I, I was I, I was worried for a second there. I was out of town. Talking about the law and the sunshine. Well, I was going to say I would provide the hors d'oeuvres for the pre-meeting, and he would provide the dinner after. <laughs> meeting. But I went ahead and stepped up. And I'd just do <laughs> Thank you very much. So um, just keep that in the back of your mind. We'll email that out. Uh, Great. I think it's a sure thing. If we can get here at six, we could twenty-five minutes give you. He could give you the the brief overview and the, the new members on the sunshine law and some things. And you know we may at some point bring you back and do some do some further training. And it, I, I can tell you, I've enjoyed this this board. Your your comments on the variances are very to the point. Um, very, I'd say, in, in regards to our profession, very educated, very good comments. Look forward to working with you all in the future. With that, I'll entertain any questions. Sounds like one of us is getting fired. <laughs> Did everybody get their letter? Their, um your disclosure form. Disclosure, don't forget to mail those back. Indicate where you're getting your income that you don't work for some X and then just vote it against them. So. Yeah, mine normally sits on my table till about August, so <laughs> get it going. Anything for uh, for Mike? Uh, can we order some uh, new shirts? Yes, we will do that with the new board. We'll new sure. year, new f we'll get you some shirts. Fat boy, Got little coat this thing. All right, great. Uh, Sunnies looking good. What, what? Their water line, water pipes showed up. Um, That's good. <laughs> it's good. I'm trying to think. Is there anything? Else uh, we are getting in the very corner, McGuire, uh, the next to the eyeglass world, is a Southern Steer Butcher. Oh, is coming in. Uh, it's a it's a newer chain butcher shop. It has uh, has a bunch of craft beers and off uh, off uh, sodas, craft sodas, craft beers and. And food to go tailgating, and it's a butcher shop. So, you, you know, I asked about the hotel. Have they gotten their rebranding done, or they, have they brought? It yes, back? they just submitted. So, what happened? They they just submitted a the revision, so we can stamp the pr the plan approved. Then we're going to do immediately do a revision because it's now it's not the dual brand. It's going to be a Hampton Inn, yeah. and the dual brand had the entrance on the east side, and the Hampton Inn is going to have an entrance on the southern side. So yeah. we're going to. Stamp the plan approved so they can begin construction, then do a revision, which just changes the outline of the building, really, not much changes. So can, that's in. Can I ask you just one quick question yes. about heights, right? So yes. looking Mount Door is about to have their meeting next week about their height requirements. They're gonna talk about going to mm -hmm. forty five feet, right? Is that where we're gonna be looking to go to? Well if you look at the city, what we planned in the Highway fifty corridor, we want the Highway fifty to become that midtown look, not too tall. Uh, target area one can afford some opportunity along the turnpike, but really that midtown look, six eight story maximum, but that's really appropriate for Highway fifty. Going out a Koyapopka, it needs to be really fifty and when you get to is it the parapet, is it a flat roof? You're really getting the heights up there. You, you don't want something. You, you, you want to have tasteful Commerce Park, a tasteful, high-density, small-packed residential community with a trail right there, little opportunities for retail, op opportunities for employment, knowing that there's a trail on that west side, a 12-foot trail that's going to lead up to the West Orange Trail at the, uh, just under the 429. So um, heights, really the, the higher, looking at 50 to have that midtown look, yeah. not not a Koyapopka, not out Clark Road, not West Road. Um, so. Great. Yeah, in, in the past, I've seen like the 3D representations, like when they went high, you know, and you had a residential over here. I think we've done it here for like a 3D line of sight to make sure that, you know, the communities aren't I may aren't for the commission lighted. meeting have a balloon flown to show that. Uh, we, we've talked about that. We, that may be something they want to do to kind of show the line of sight. The argument that you know, they're not planting 36 inch oak trees from day one. So the, the, the right. site being shielded, it's, it's not. You're gonna see it for 12 years, 15 yeah. years. You're gonna know, you know, the, the, the 429 came the, before the, I mean, after the silos. And, yeah. and so the silos are out of place now. Anybody else? I'm good, I'm good. 
Uh, motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Second? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Have a Aye. great night. Okay, then if you're here next meeting, I'll do a really proper introduction to a Notch Whitfield, our new zoning manager. I'll give her all the accolades, all right. but we'll, we'll give her the full. Mr. Hello, once we have the full commission. Mr. Sweet. Mr. Right, that was Mr.